Are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network, uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA? Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh, and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh-based, so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at PittsburghOnVideo.org, a big aggregator of these this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you wherever you are around the world. That's PittsburghOnVideo.org. Go check it out. This week on Awesome Cast, we talk about 3D printing, Doctor Who physics, and iPorn? Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 152. Mike Sorg here, coming from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get geeky. I'm not rage quitting on Game of Thrones. Nope, not like all the people we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, with me, as usual, on the couch, chilling, loving his Doctor Who marathon. I figured it out. What? It's not man-made. It's not man-made. That's why. What, wood? Yes. Oh, we were talking about the uh, sonic screwdriver and why doesn't it work on wood? It's not man-made. Everything else he uses on it, yeah. right, all metals and everything, it's man-made. That's that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, mostly. Mostly. Well, it, if you temper it to put it down, you're using other materials that are going to merge with the metals, and that's going to make it man-made. There you go. There we go. If you have any thoughts on the, how the sonic <laughs> screwdriver works, make sure you drop it to at Chachi says on the Twitter. Also with us coming from Baltimore, we had Boston in here last week. We got Baltimore, uh, Jack Bunja. Uh, Bunjajumping.blogspot.com and Jackson Lewis on the Twitter. How you doing? Good, good. How are you guys? All right, all right. Are uh, you ready to get geeky with us, sir? Yes, absolutely. All right. Hey, share share with us real quick. What is your geeky background so everybody know where you're coming from? Uh, well, I guess I work at the uh, for as a contractor for the U.S. Army, mm -hmm. and currently I work at the Edgewood Chemical Biological Center up in Aberdeen. So that's kind of a hub of geekiness right there. Awesome. But you have a video, you have like a background in video and stuff. Yeah, before that I worked in t television stations. I've done a few uh, webmaster, not a web designer, mind you, but you know, user interface uh, person for a few websites for a few companies. So I've kind of dabbled in that area, technically speaking. Are you? I just don't. I don't write code. I just speak to geeks. <laughs> And that's that's still language all its own, right? Uh, exactly. You also used to work with uh, somebody else we had on the show from up in Erie, uh, Tom Duska, Local Bone. Yes, I worked with Local Bone at WICU. Uh, he was graphics at the time, and I was commercial production, so I was making fun things, and he was trying to figure out what color they were because he's colorblind. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't he like the sole graphics guy up there now? Uh-oh. And that's yeah, it's really fun. And then uh, you have to guess. Yeah, <laughs> there's like some kind of color wheel help, right? Um, and you should just yeah. start labeling everything, right? It's like the color by numbers kind well, of thing. Well, the Pantone wheel has numbers, so he can figure it out most of the times. But when he tries to get creative with something, it's fun. I can remember the really hot pink logo he tried to put up once. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> then that explains news up in uh, Erie. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so let's get geeky with our awesome thing of the week. Chachi, do you have one this week? Doctor Who. Doctor Who in general? It's just mind-blowing. How? Now, I told somebody about how far you were last night. They're like, oh my god, how did he do that so fast? When did you start? Uh, three, three and a half weeks ago. Was it three and a half? It yeah. doesn't seem like it was that long. Three and a half weeks ago. And you've gone through season one through... I'm at seven and a half now. Seven and a half. Or no, no, not seven and a half. Six uh, and a half. Six and a half. I'm halfway through season six. So it's halfway through season six. And for those of the Doctor Who, that's when you found out about the like what the Doctor's wife is, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, it, it, the first... Uh, the funny thing is uh, when I'm watching it, it no one I'm, I'm around has any interest in watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of IT department is this? Because because the the, the <laughs> because seriously because the IT department at at my wife's work loves the fact that she is into this stuff I, and won't stop talking to her about it. I can't. Uh, 
I can't go into it here. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I do not have the ability to say anything nice. Okay. So, so I you won't can, say anything at all. Yes, I can't. Yes. I, uh, Good I'm, advice from your mother and potentially your lawyer. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, and yet the first thing I do is I message you. Mm-hmm. When, when I reach one of those what the moments, it's I'm like, just it's like, like I've been personally live tweeted his entire experience, he, and he has. Um, I, there have been some moments where I'll, I'll live tweet or I'll put up some random comments mm-hmm. um, based on what's happening. It's usually when there's uh, Daleks and Cybermen in the same episode, <laughs> because I, I mean at that point I'm just like everyone is effed. <laughs> Like they show those characters in the same room or the same space, I'm just like effed, goodbye world. But uh, so, so Chachi, yeah. do you watch the new episodes at the same time as the old episodes? Like, are no. you getting caught up while staying current, or are you just going old? No, no, I uh, I actually used to uh, mock everyone that watched Doctor Who. Yep. Oh. Um. For for a long time. For for a really for long time, a honestly, I I mocked. Uh, a lot of people, and it, it actually got me a lot of attention at the Pittsburgh Comic Con. Yes, um, because I put up random signs uh, making fun of Doctor Who. <laughs> I was going to ask what you thought about the fact that the new Doctor Who is quitting. Uh, you know what? It doesn't really bother me that much because he's still not better than uh, David Tennant or the guy before him. Understand. Understand. Like, he's blown through this in three weeks. It's not like he's had a lot of time to have an affection for anybody, I think. All right. You've gone through the paces. No. Just because I'm going through it faster than you are. Okay. Okay. Here's the the problem with uh, people commenting on how I watch stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Just because I watched it faster than other people had a chance to, thanks to the miracle of Netflix, does not mean that I do not form an emotional attachment to any of the characters. Okay, okay, that's a good question, though. I mean, that, that, does do you get a different experience than the people that have watched it over no. the long period? I, I get emotionally attached to these characters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I get sad when the companions die or leave. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, it's the same thing. So well, I mean, the I, I had the question was because I think it's a plot thing right now, right? Isn't he out of lives? Um, like if he leaves, how do they bring him back? I thought this was his last regeneration. I, I don't know. I don't know if they're that far with it. But I I have I'm thanks like, for the spoiler, Dick. <laughs> Didn't realize the doctor ran out of lives. Actually, I thought they started touching on it around when you were where you're watching now. No, um, I thought, is it is, or is I this because I haven't long, watched the latest no. season. At this point in time, it all has to do with his uh, proximity to the TARDIS. It's, okay. Is so, I, I mean, at this point in time, until he said something, I didn't realize the doctor ran out of lives. I feel, I feel like even, well, they, even in Tenet they do days... do it really they on. It, it's, it, considering the length of the series, they did it, a, I can't remember what season, but it was years ago, which is kind of unheard of to go this long, but already have set limits on, like... Seemingly, how long the series could last? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess they get creative with it, I, and it may fail. But I mean, I, at this point in time, unless she dies soon, uh, you always have his wife to fall back on. I don't uh, see it dying. I mean, what else do British people have yeah. to hold on to? Does she die in like the next three episodes? Actually, she died the first time you saw her. Oh, right, she did. Time travel, remember? Yeah. We, you know, we, I keep forgetting they're meeting at different points in time on their, their lines. <laughs> that's the part that's messing with me right now. You know now. what would be messed up? If you got, I'm sure somebody has this watch order. If you watched based on her timeline. That should be like one of the, uh, the hour-long episodes they do. In between seasons, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like that should be one of the mini movies. Just like 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 her in between, right? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. But uh, uh, yeah, it's just a mind fuck. Yeah, right yeah. yeah Sorry. So, supposedly it's gonna be. Um, they're gonna do the fiftieth anniversary special. Was I think it is, and then they're gonna do the mm-hmm. Christmas special, and that's gonna be the last one. So, um, hey, he's gone. What was that? Four seasons. I think so. Yeah. I thought so. I didn't think he would last. I didn't think he had as good of a look as David Tennant and. And uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Chris, I can't remember his name. Eccleston. Eccleston. Yeah. Yeah. Which one so was Eccleston? I, I thought he was too baby faced. The first one. Uh, the first one uh, I like that actor. 
Yeah. In general. He's like off, like I saw that guy, and I'm like, oh, that's the bad guy from Gone in 60 Seconds. And also the invisible dude from Heroes. Yeah. I, and so I'm just like, all right, I like that guy. And then uh, I, I, and then they had David Tennant, and I'm like, I'm not going to like this guy. No, not at all. And then he grew on me, and he's probably my favorite that I've seen so far. And I haven't gone back and watched all the old stuff because of things uh, Sorgas said. Um, uh, but that yeah, it's tough to watch. That'll really probably ones. be on my to-do list. So you're gonna watch the old old ones? Yeah. Uh, good luck. Let me know how that goes because <laughs> I've dipped in a couple of times. I want to see the not I, really. I for at me. least have to go back and sample the other doctors. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I feel like that's something that has to be like, done. Also, think like the 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 the, the uh, direction of the show was a lot different, and the tone of the show was a lot different. What the Doctor was, I think, was perceived as something completely different, too, if you go back through it. so, so Plus, I, you got to go with the different outfits, the generational differences. I mean, it's an entirely yeah, different experience. Yeah. Television was so different in those times. Especially, yeah. on the, just, especially in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like watching Are You Being Served meets, you know, an episode of Star Trek. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Um, excellent. <laughs> Jack, what's your uh, awesome thing of the week? Well, actually, I, uh, w- where we work, we have uh, 3D printing as part of some of the, the processes that we do. And so I follow a lot of 3D printing stories. And recently, I think it came out today, it, they were talking about how 3D printers are going to be the start of the next industrial revolution, but not necessarily mm-hmm. from a positive angle. Um, we're talking about how, you know, right now there's an entire manufacturing industry that bases itself upon having extra parts. So now with a 3d printer, if you go to a mechanic and say you have a Volkswagen, that's a unique, uh, parts set, the mechanic has a 3d printer and has the blueprints for it and the material, he could make your replacement part. So it kind of makes this warehouse mentality of having a stockpile of extra parts start to become obsolete yeah, and it could completely revolutionize everything again. Now I'm not saying it's going to go away because we still have a lot of, I mean, they still print a phone book. So, <laughs> I mean, there's certain standards I, that are going to stick around. Side, side note. We went but, to a hotel this weekend, uh, for our anniversary and, um, I went over, looked at the nice stand, pulled something out. I was like, Hey, somebody printed out Google. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's pretty much the case. So, I, I, I mean, I don't think the manufacturing industry will go away. Yeah. And it's not it's not like we are all going to have, like, 3D printers here. And even if we did, I can only imagine what the cost of some of these blueprint plans are going to be. Yeah, and I know some of the stories that have been coming around so far. Um, like, I know there's a really big one that came over about uh, I, some kind of gun or weapon plans, and there was some kind of trademark kerfuffle over that. Um, <laughs> well, it, it, so, also, it, it was 180,000 downloads of yeah. those gun plans yeah. before well, wasn't they pulled it, it down. Didn't, like, some branch of the government say, take it down off the Internet? And they said, good luck, uh, no, they, because you can't. Like, I take it down off my server, but that doesn't stop anything. Well, they pulled it down from the a wiki page or whatever it was on originally, mm-hmm. and but they had said how many times it was downloaded. And then tracking it, like, if I download it and email it to 100 of my friends, how do you track it beyond that? Mm-hmm. So, so you're talking 180,000 downloads, and if they're downloaded by people who are, you know, have a huge network, you can't track that. So the number of people that have it are insane. And this is the cool thing, because you're, you're getting things like this, and, and you're seeing a lot of people being able to uh, uh, figure things out like in advance and you know put something put together a prototype that they can take to a Kickstarter, right? Or, or, or right. something like that. Or, or, or the parts idea, like you said. Or just making something cool, you know, on their own without having to go to a manufacturer, you know. Um, I, the, maker, like the maker community is the big thing here. And, right. and and just think about like how uh, music production has become commoditized. Anybody can make anything. Anybody can do you know this? What we're doing here is is like this kind of stuff wasn't possible ten years ago without a lot of money. It's become pretty commoditized. Any dude in their basement, like here, uh, can yeah. do this thing. Uh, same with video in general. Right now, is really cheap and commoditized. As long as you're smart with it, you don't need much money to do some really cool stuff. Look at YouTube. Right. 
Uh, so this is kind of the, I want to say YouTube is not the YouTubization, but the, you know, like what happened to video, that commodization of making things. Um, and I think it's really exciting. I think, I think more than, uh, you know, you're going to see those kinds of things break down, like the stockpile things, like you, like you mentioned, and that's going to break yeah. down some parts of industry, but I think it's really exciting to see what parts build up out of that. Now, now, something they don't talk about, or I haven't seen anywhere written about, is this coincides with a change in the patent law. Yes. And and now it's the first to file. So it really affects the maker community in that you don't have to show copious re amounts of research. And, and filing for a patent isn't necessarily as difficult as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So now you have an entire community of makers that would be able to um, come up with an idea actually make a prototype of said idea, document it, and get it patented a lot quicker. Now, and it's going to take the edge off of the market in that respect. Is this the, um, is this the, uh, the uh, stuff that came out today about the patent office? Well, I didn't see what came out today. This came out, what I know about the change came out, started, I want to say it was in mid-May. Or the beginning, first week of May is when the change happened. Okay. And there was a grandfather period of filing the old way that ran up, basically. Mm -hmm. So now it, 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 it's a matter of first to file, and you just have to show your work. So if you're an inventor, and you do not patent your invention, and you would take it to a corporation to try to sell it, and if they were able to see it and reverse engineer it after you left, they could technically go and file that patent if you didn't and own everything you have. So, and they, you basically have not a leg to stand on. So basically this takes away prior art. Yes. For those of so if, if if I made a thing, if I made uh, you know, if I if I made this kind of cup, there's a there's a patent on this cup from that this Burger King smoothie I just got handed. Uh, right? If I didn't patent this cup and Burger King goes and patents this cup um, I can prove no. I made that thing first, and they they got the idea from me, or they came up their own. But they, but I did it first. I should get the patent that would supersede whatever they fought with the with the previous system. But now that's right. gone. that's gone. If you don't put right. it down, and how much is the patent? Something it's a, it's a few hundred dollars, right? Uh, it depends. I mean, you're talking a few hundred dollars to file, but you also have to take the preparation and filing it the proper way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're talking, you know, hours of work in a lot of cases. And, and unless you have some place, like a lot of large corporations will have a patent office. So if they have a group of scientists or technicians, engineers working with them, then they can go and uh, run through the patent for you without doing that. Mm -hmm. But if you're an inventor and you're trying to file for your patent, you're talking a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, uh, my uh, our entire Virgi Virginia office does nothing but patents and trademarks. It's a big thing. Yeah, it's a big thing. Uh, you can see how much stuff's going on. I mean, Samsung, Apple are suing each other every other week over something different. It seems when Google's in there, uh, Microsoft's in there with a lot of that stuff. As patent trolls come up, since we're talking about this, I, I could I, I should bring this story up um, that came up this week about podcasting and patents. Um, and I'll get back to my awesome thing of the week. But uh, I don't know if you saw this, Jack. Uh, the EFF uh, sent out a message uh, late last week. I think it might have been even Friday. They wanted to try to raise $30,000 to defeat a podcasting patent troll. Basically, this was a very broad uh, kind of base patent that was filed, I think, in the late 90s, well before podcasting was even like a glimmer in Steve Jobs' eye, I think. Um and, uh, you know, not getting too deep into it. I'm not a lawyer or anything like that, but I've been, you know, a little bit of what I've been hearing. Um, so it basically gets a patent troll. It's somebody that got this patent. It's some company that hasn't even made anything in the last 15 years other than just suing people over patents like this. Apparently, they already sued Apple. Um, and Apple actually went to a settlement with them. Uh, but they're trying to target big people. Uh, I think they said Adam Carolla has been hit. Uh, a couple of the bigger companies, I, I think they're going after like NBCs and CBSs and stuff because they all have podcasting for their shows and ESPN and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it could get to a point if these guys were let go, they could hit smaller but substantial guys like This Week in Tech, like Revision 3, I guess they're owned by Discovery now, of course. 
um, or anybody else to, you know, the people that I serve my shows on, uh, you know, could, could get wiped out by this blip TV, talk shoe, etc. Um, so this is a pretty big deal. Such a response. Last I checked, they raised over $60,000. Wow. So, so I, I didn't even get a chance to get my five bucks in there. So, <laughs> my question is is and uh, things like this. When does it become a public service of domain? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's been done to so many times and so many variations by so many different companies. And if you own the patent and don't act on it, and then all of a sudden try to come collect once it becomes profitable, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, and with the changes in the patent law. I, I think they're trying to remove the predatory portion. Yeah. So I, I, I think that the, this type of predatory practice, I can't see them letting it stand. Okay. Like uh, you're going to completely destroy the market. Well, the, the thing the EFF, I'll get to you here, Josh. Uh, the thing the EFF doing, and by the way, they're up to 65000 are uh, $473. So twice as much. Great. They'll have plenty to get in there. Um, but they're going, they're not going after the troll themselves. They're not trying to defend anybody specifically. They are actually going to, I believe the patent office to try to, uh, there's, there, there's some process they can go through, uh, to try to supersede this. So I think, I think to see it as a, or, uh, as a, as a fraudulent patent or a tr- patent troll or something like that, however that works. The patent on it is coming up. Okay. And so what they can do is they can, uh, buy that patent. Kind of like all the third, all all the reason the reason all these third companies or third party companies are making uh, Nintendo hardware because it, it went up. Yeah, they let it go. Right. I didn't know you could renew a patent like that. Yeah. I thought I you thought have they, to. I thought I, I thought you have to let it go after so many years. No, you can renew it. Maybe I'm thinking trademarks. Uh, it, what is it? it? Trademarks you have you can let go. Yeah. Um, but trademarks have been have been extended so long because of mickey mouse and everything right making them change the rules but uh one of the and by that i do mean mickey mouse himself went to the patent offices and changed it yeah um one of the things the problem (laughs) the problem with this entire thing is it could have been stopped at the beginning well yeah had apple or whoever he sued first said, oh, we should probably take care of this now while it's a problem. None of these other people would have been sued. Because yeah. what yeah. would have happened is had Apple paid, uh, uh, just dished out the money for the attorneys they're already paying. Yeah, yeah. To shut this guy down in the Which beginning. Which is so funny, isn't it? Because of all the people they're suing for patents. Right. For all, it would have taken a, a portion of the time and effort they're putting into what the, what lawsuits they're filing now. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> had they just headed this off at the pass, yeah. then if the, the guy who owned the patent took it back to court, the judge would have been like, no, because of this ruling right here. Yeah. Yeah. It, which... <laughs> Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, I think the thing is that Apple is not interested in saving podcasting. I don't think they can give a crap either way. And that's the problem. That's the problem. They've let what, it go. You're requiring Steve Jobs to care about somebody other than himself. Yeah. You know, God yeah. rest his soul. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and know, I realize that. He's not going to care. It, yeah. uh, but the, the thing is also is I doubt he even knew about it. True. Like yeah. it, it is something this yeah. small. If they were able to just dismiss it that easily, chances are he maybe got a memo on it. Mm-hmm. He was like, "I don't have time for this crap." He put it in his trash and moved on with his day. <laughs> set so tra- I mean, set the trash can on fire. Ha- ha- yeah, <laughs> he was like, "I don't have time for this crap." And lit it on fire and threw it away. But I mean, I, honestly, had someone at Apple taken. The few hours that it probably would have taken to be like, yeah, no, this guy is wrong mm-hmm. in front of a judge. And they wouldn't have even had to go in front of a judge. They would have had to type over a response, send it to the court. The court would have read it. And they would have shut down the case. And I really think it's just a, a ah, this is somebody else's problem. We got, we got iPhones to build. You know, we got Android to shut down. And that's the problem with the world. <laughs> No, all it would take, because the patent trolls always go after the first, highest uh, money-making company. 
those are the first one they hit because then uh, that settlement will fund the rest of their lawsuits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if the first company would take the six hours to draft the response Mm -hmm. that they're paying someone who makes barely more than minimum wage to do. Mm -hmm. Note to self, patent, patent response lawsuits. (laughs) But I mean, seriously, because you know what happens? And I know this from experience, all right? (laughs) The, uh, The lawsuit comes in. The company calls their attorneys. The attorney spent an hour. That company gets billed, uh, depending on their lawyers, six hundred to a thousand dollars. All right, per hour, uh, broken down into fifteen-minute increments. So if the phone call takes fifteen minutes for the lawyer to say, "Oh yeah, send it over," or "No, you don't want to waste your time on that," I mean, I mean so fifteen minutes—that's uh, uh, three hundred bucks. We'll say, all right, three hundred bucks for the attorney to say, "Yes, we'll take it." Send it over. The attorney will look at the lawsuit, tell his secretary what to write. Takes an hour. It was too bad the paralegal left the room. That could tell us this. Yeah, and, and they would give she, it. To, I, don't, I don't think she did. They deal with trademark. They would give it to your wife office, yes. to draft the response based on something they've already responded to. <laughs> Here, just Xerox this. They, no, they would go in, change the company names, and change any other pertinent information. Yes, and send it to the court. Mm-hmm. Three hours. Mm-hmm. Sure, it cost you uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. If the guy is suing you, you made that taking a piss. Yep. <laughs> That's all it takes to stop these guys. So. <laughs> all right. If we're, uh, we're going to stop every predatory company. We could be here a while. I know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, let's let's bring it around. Let's bring it around to people rage quitting Game of Thrones. Now, I don't want to get spoilery, uh, so if anybody has not watched Game of Thrones yet, Bobby, in the chat room, this means you. Uh, we're about to get into. A, I, I don't want to completely talk about exactly what happened. Uh, a whole lot here. No, you should but, spoil the crap out of it. But you should make this just uh, make the title of the show. I need a graphic. Make I, the I need, make I, the title of the show. Spoiler alert. Yeah. And then spend the next twenty minutes going detail by detail what happened in that episode. I don't think that's the intention of this show. But uh, yeah, okay. Basically, Game <laughs> of Thrones. They're 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 nearing the end here. Uh, they only have one episode left here in, in season three, right? And Bobby's gone out of the chat room. What? Watch the damn thing. At least well, the last. Still here. At least the last ten minutes. <laughs> Jeez, Bobby, stop playing Avengers, and you could be watching some Game of Thrones, huh? Um. Can he judge inference? The name of the episode was Red Wedding. <laughs> it wasn't because it's their favorite color. No, so you, you and, and I, I'm presuming that Bobby has not read the book. Okay, but the the interesting. Okay, so so episode episode episode. A uh, bunch of really important people got really killed at a wedding. <laughs> Can I, can I? <laughs> you just spoiled the entire episode. I didn't say who did. There, you know how many weddings are happening this season? There's like, I think they said there's like four more people betrothed that they have to get to. Oh. We just only, this is the second wedding. I don't know what's going to happen in the rest of them. Holy shit. Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I forgot my own podcast roles. Uh, <laughs> you know, you dropped the F-bomb yeah. earlier. I'm not looking at for that at 2 a.m. when I edit this. I, I it's, it's, it's out there. <laughs> I, you but, can't uh, erase cyberspace. But they, and, and there was a really good conversation about this over on Frame Rate on Twitter. Uh, I was listening to today, and and the idea that like you know there is a pretty large set of people that have watched this, or I'm sorry, read this already, right? Like they they know what's happening next season for the most part. They're pretty succinct, it seems, with the books. Some things are changed. Some things are kind of missed, outlined out of order for flow and everything. But still, for the most part. The general things are happening. Um, so, like, this idea, like, the first thing I saw, and I, I don't have the link handy, but I tweeted it the other day, uh, last night, actually, um, was reactions to the Red Wedding. And again, lots of murder. Holy crap, lots of murder. Really heavy graphic murder, okay? Um, also, one of the best creative endings to a show I have seen in quite some time. <laughs> Is that better than the one where they ended, like, they had something really... 
like like not this much, but like really like holy crap happened, and then they have like a ska version of like the Lancer song or something come up. I remember that. I, I don't. I, this is better. Okay. This okay. Is, this is better. Well, I mean, well, first of all, on a you know, this was pretty awesome kind of thing. Like they did this. It was all foreboding, and then no music for the credits, which was yeah. less like, whoa. Uh, <laughs> but the whole idea. First, there's a score of just look up. Game of Thrones Red Wedding reaction videos, fantastic. There's all these people that have been sitting there, read the book, knew this thing was coming, knew definitely this thing was happening in this episode, pulled out their phone and got their loved one's reaction, <laughs> which are pretty classic. And, and you know what's funny? This is probably the same generation of people that had all those taped outrages when Senjaya got voted off of American Idol. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but there's that right and then and then this other great account uh, uh i discovered again uh, thanks to frame rate over there uh called uh at red wedding tears on twitter all this is is retweets of people rage quitting game of thrones uh the the, the best one and i'm sure i'm not it's going to be back here but the one that just said and, and i'm I apologize for the language that's on your screen if you're watching video uh the the uh Game of Thrones just ruined my life. I'm not watching anymore. Uh, I want to kill the writers and producers of Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, it's pretty Dude, fantastic. God. I'm actually following this for, for a smile. So anytime I see like uh, 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 crazy anger on my Twitter feed and it doesn't have to do with the Penguins right now, I know it has to do with Game of Thrones. Um, so, I mean, just, just the, I love this mass holy crap reaction that's going on with this. And they've just... You know, talk about like a series that has really kind of done the right pace, you know, and built people yeah. up to this point that half the people knew was coming and shut up about it. You know, gonna, I mean, they need to know it's going to get worse. <laughs> if you're having a problem now, maybe it's best for you, your doctor. Maybe you should quit. Maybe you should go watch First Night. OK, or 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 Night's Tale. Or, or Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, the happy stories. Because this is not it. This is, understand, this is the Sopranos of medieval badassery. If, okay. if you're switching over from Desperate Housewives to watch Game of Thrones, you might be making a mistake. But we get to, and that's what I love about social media, is we get to be entertained by these people that have this, been misled in by this whole thing, you know? <laughs> I, I don't know what they thought they were going to get. I mean, I, 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 it's interesting. I guess they're, they're not used to shows that kill the good-looking people. <laughs> That's right. That's right. They are killing all the good-looking people. We're, we're left with the midget and the homely girl. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you have the midget. You have the guy with the half-burned face. Yeah. He's you've, all right. Got, he's all right. Got, I thought he was dead already. He's, he's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you got the child king that looks like he might have Down syndrome, <laughs> and, and you have you know just that beats pro know. that beats prostitutes to death with with an yeah, arrow. Ex exactly, you know, beats them to death, and and don't forget with the whole bolts from his uh, from his, his his what do you call it uh, the crossbow? Yeah, for the last one. So so yeah, I mean, you have the demented child of incest, and and. Who's left that's good looking? You have uh, freaking uh, the guy from the the wall, the the bastard son of the Stark. Yeah, but remember his face got scratched up by that crow. Sorry, uh, uh, spoilers. Uh, so so he's not good looking <laughs> anymore. So he's gonna live. He's he's making it to the last book. He's got it right. Uh, again, not reading it. Uh, so Whoa. having read it, 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 let's just say it's ambiguous. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> no spoilers. I, there's not, a not level spoiled. of spoiler hitch, you know. But I enjoyed that. <laughs> I enjoy. I enjoy the like the faint. Like I knew red something was coming, and now it's like, oh, that's what they were talking about like three weeks ago on the on the show I was listening to. You know, well, I enjoy this like multi level thing that's happening here. None of the banners are red. Like I said before, the name of the episode <laughs> was Red Wedding, and if you thought they were throwing rose petals down. You are sadly mistaken. I mean, I mean, it's me. I was thinking a Billy Idol song. I don't know. I, I, mm. All right, all right. Let's get back to tech here. Anyways, there, there's a couple of things to bring up here. Let's talk about pornography. Chachi? Yes. 
<laughs> yes, Tasha, did you see the story in there? No, I didn't. Okay, so you knew this was going to happen. We got this new technology. Uh -huh. You're putting on the, your face, right? Yes. What's, what's making noise over there? Uh, I'm playing with this bar. Is it the bar? Yeah. Or is it a computer? It sounds like a fan of some sort. It sounds like one of the computers about to blow up. <laughs> uh, I, I can't hear it. Uh, anyways, um, oh, it's this one over here. Never mind. It will just be me that's taken out. Sweet. Uh, it's going to be the red awesome cap. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, crap, I can't find it. Yes. Uh, I'll only say this once. The, the the title is officially you know not safe to work, but it's called... Uh, oh, wait, I can't find it now. Oh, this is the Google Glass. Oh, there story, it is. Correct? There it is. Uh, so... They released this app for Google Glass. Uh, somebody got the developer kit, you know, kept to the the terms of service of what they could and couldn't do, etc. Uh, the the I'll, I'll, this is all I want to show. I can't get into the site. Trust me, I can't get into the site for the show. I can't uh, see it. Is uh, uh, tits and glass, right? It's not me. What's that? <laughs> it's not me. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's the wrong one. So it's called Tits and Glass, and basically it's just going to serve porn to your eyeball, right? Um, apparently, they, they released it Monday. Didn't know that they changed the uh, 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 you know developer agreement on Friday, apparently, with uh, Google. And, of course, Google came out and said they're not going to allow any face recognition until uh, they they have proper security on that kind of stuff. Um, so so they have it, our first uh, sex app. They say they're going to reconfigure it to the new terms, which oddly mean no sexiness. Uh, so I don't know what exactly they're going to do with that to get around it. Here's my question. Uh, so, yeah. I, I, no you can be surprised. You can do Google searches from Google Glass. Yes. <laughs> And that's the iPhone problem, too, right? You can't get porn in the App Store, but you can just go to a website. Right. Um, now, I don't know. I mean, it's not like you're going to a web browser in Google Glass. So I don't know how that interface works. It seems like everything's kind of pushed through. Now, and also, think about Android completely has porn apps, doesn't it? Yeah. So this is a... a granted, this is not public. This is a developer release. This is something where they're kind of trying to, like, let's tame this stuff before it gets too wild and bad stories like this come out, right? That tits and glass is all over the headlines now. Um, is this bad? I mean, I, I get it, but, I mean, from the beginning of time, as soon as we were drawing on cave walls, we started porn, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So I, 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 how do you stop it from Google Glass? Yeah. Lyric. By the way, Lyric Tragedy is giving me a death flare off to the side right now. But <laughs> that, that being said. <laughs> so that, uh oh. Well, here's the thing, okay? Uh, not only are you right when you say that, yes, a, a mankind has been putting porn on everything we can put porn on since the beginning of time. I tried putting it on my Game Boy. I didn't really know how to do that at 12 exactly. years old. Exactly. Are we getting here? <laughs> You're not muted. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so uh, uh, the Big Bang Theory happened. Bam, there was porn, all right? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you heard wow. me. That's how quick it happened. Okay. You had moon rocks humping other moon rocks, and <laughs> it, was, it was weird. But that's how you know technology is going to succeed. Mm -hmm. Will it operate Porn. Look at it, what was it? HD DVDs. Mm -hmm. No porn. Where'd it go? Blu-ray. I guess exactly. There's porn on Blu-ray. Where are HD DVDs right now? A uh, landfill next to those ET cartridges. Exactly. All right. Um. Uh, beta. Yeah. Versus VHS. I don't think that was a porn problem. It was, was a porn, porn problem. Oh, it was a porn problem. It was a porn problem. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I got a point, though, counterpoint for that one, Chachi. What about video game consoles? I don't know of any X-rated PlayStation games. Mm. Uh, your Xbox won't play them because they're controlled by the U.S. government. Uh, mm, 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 mm. No, but, they won't sell them here. The, there are porn games made every day for video game there consoles. Are. There are. You cannot buy them in the United you States. Can, no, I, and I, I don't think that's a government thing. I believe, and 
it's, it, it's a it's a company region thing. It's a, the the company it's has to abide by certain thing. rules it's, in each region. It's That's a marketing. No, thing. the company has to abide by certain rules in each region they sell in. Okay. That's why it costs so much for consoles to be released in different regions because they have to abide to the rules set forth by that region. That's why ULA needs the the additional. Uh, was it twenty five million dollar backing money to do the international to go international? Mm. Oh, okay, I, I get that, but I guess my question still stands that I, you would consider the U.S. version of the PlayStation and the Xbox to be successful, mm -hmm. and there isn't necessarily porn associated with that, at least as a free market ability. Uh, I can so, pull up porn on my Xbox three hundred and sixty. You can now. <laughs> you, you can pull up <laughs> but, a porn video site easier than you can YouTube. I don't know, because they're the ones that are the more forward-thinking. <laughs> well, uh, but I, I guess, and you're right, I, I guess I'm just talking if you look at video games the same way as you look at apps, because isn't that essentially what they are? They come up with a new app, they yeah. just charge you 50 bucks, and it's instead of downloading it, well, you can even download them from the cloud now, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so well, I mean, it's, well, it's well, kind of the same thought. Well, sure. there are plenty more Android phones out there than iPhone, so you could apply that. But is that a cost basis? Uh, it, well, it's a lot of factors. It's not. It's not. I mean, I don't think we're saying. I don't. We're, I don't think we're saying that anything lives or dies by the fact that they have porn. I think this is kind of a coincidental thing. <laughs> you're, uh, you're saying it's a coincidence that that that, that oh. porn has been tightly wound to the success of certain media formats. You know, <laughs> I. That's. I mean, this is just. You know, you look back. You know, it, it's the old, I guess it's the old parody rule that, you know, you've made it once that somebody develops porn for you. It's like if <laughs> yeah. you know you become famous as soon as you're lampooned on like Jay Leno or one of the late night talk shows. So uh, I guess the thought is, I guess you wouldn't take time to make a porn app for it if you didn't think it was going to succeed. I mean, that's when we know that we've made it in podcasting is when somebody's done a uh, awesome cast triple X, which is going to be really awkward because it's usually a bunch of dudes. Yeah. So I we won't I won't know about it. <laughs> you won't know I don't about I, it. I don't know who it's gonna be awkward for. You're the only two in the studio. I even more <laughs> awkward. Okay. Um <laughs> There was other stuff that happened this week. Oh god, what was it? Please. Uh, just uh, wait. No, just wait for the uh, porn parody. Because whoever's on the computer screen is gonna be masturbating to the porn <laughs> <laughs> via Google Google Hangout or Skype. Wow. Wow, okay. <laughs> Um, wow. uh, where did we go wrong? Wow, Jack, what did I was you, gonna, what did I was you bring to this my show? My 3D talking about before. Did you see how they are now? At NASA wants to technically develop the replicator technology that they had on uh, Star Trek <laughs> using. Well, 3D. I feel like they I want, feel like somebody somewhere has always been working on that idea, right? They want to 3D print a pizza. Hell yeah. And oh yeah, like, we, we yeah. Always, we'll just make everything out of wheat. If we can like 3D print stuff out of wheat and cheese, and we got a cow back here, okay? Um, <laughs> I mean, that's 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 where it's got to start with, right? Because that's how 3D printers work: is you get a block of a material and it cuts out the thing. Well, now you're talking. That it's actually being constructed from the base proteins and carbohydrates. So we're talking not even taking it from the wheat level you're going like even further down the chain to you know i'm guessing whatever you know cheese whiz is made out of it's not cheese but it's this, <laughs> this the pizza of this that. steak is made entirely out of cheese whiz it's not gonna be healthy the whole food people are gonna hate this um <laughs> or love it depending on how they do this thing i like this idea <laughs> Well, I can't imagine it's going to taste good. I mean, I I don't know about you, but ice, astronaut ice cream is crap. Yes, it is. Yes, and they have not upgraded imagine 3D it. printed least, stuff going to be any better. At least whatever they sell down at the Science Center, they have not updated that. Um, but that's well, why hey, Dippin' Dots is out of business. Is, oh, and that's such a shame, too, man. So Dippin' Dots was awesome. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Ah, mm. Mm. I saw a rip off that Dippin' Dots machine at a, a mall over the weekend. No, I, it it's sad. I have to, I have to agree with Jack on this one. On the uh, Dippin' Dots or the 3D thing? The Dippin' Dots. Oh like no, no, you got the wrong ones. Rainbow, man. Rainbow, all the way. 
I, I like mouth. cookies and cream, bitch. Oh, hey, hey, hey. But I'm saying, you know, I, I, I really, like, you talk about this, like, probably isn't going to taste good because, of course, you're going to make everything out of cheese whiz and, and a stale cat. Cat? It could be made out of cat in the back. Um, <laughs> but, China. hey, you know, Diet Soda sucked, you know, 20 years ago, and now Coke Zero is pretty tasty right now, you know? That's not diet, though. It's, it's a different but, kind of diet. It's not diet it's soda. It's diet. Right? It's a calorie. <laughs> Since we're talking food, I didn't know if you also saw that story out there about Amazon trying to expand their business into the grocery market space even more. You know what? I'm already getting my paper towels and my toilet paper out of there, so why not? Well, my brother actually works for Amazon, and uh, the reason he got hired was he has military experience. And what they're trying to do is streamline their delivery process, both Mm -hmm. the in and out so that you can have 24-hour turnaround on a more regular basis. So then and he, that's why they're pushing that Prime membership as well, so you can get that ex, expedited, uh, ex, uh, what? Expedited. Expedited, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> expedited uh, shipping of the, these kind of materials, because obviously you don't want your produce sitting in a box in UPS for like a week. Yeah, exactly. I, that'd be amazing. I, I'm okay with, like, I'm going to the grocery store less and less, and I love it. <laughs> but I make sure well, to go to the one at the top of the hill so it doesn't go away again. So, well, uh, A lot of the larger chains actually do a lot of online ordering for groceries for senior citizens and delivery and stuff. Like, the Safeways down in Baltimore will do that. You can go online, do your grocery shopping. You can pay for it, and then they will deliver it to you. And I, I all the time see employees going around and with lists pulling items off the shelves. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for an elderly population, it's pretty huge. But now Amazon's going to turn around and try to to move into that space. And, and it almost is like they're targeting super Walmarts and super Targets and all these other places yeah. uh, to provide the goods cheaply and, you know, immediately. Well, well, you're also door. looking at guys like Walmart are trying to do the same day delivery. Right? And as is Amazon in some markets, as is everyone. I think Google's working on it, too. So... They're all competing. Like Walmart just became a direct competitor with Amazon in this aspect now too, um, because I mean, look, they're advertising. I know they got site to store plastered all over, all over their stores now. You know, they're trying to become the Amazon with the base. You know, Best Buy does it with the you know pre buying, and I go go buy and pick up my ink that is still. I have to wait ten minutes to get from them. Um, so, well, it also affects the like if you look at it from the internet sales tax point of view now too. Yeah. So, so you're not going to get groceries free of tax anymore, and I'm not really sure how that worked with how that would work with milk because isn't there a milk tax federally, and then each state has their own set amount that they tax on like dairy? Yeah, and that's going to be depend because I know Amazon has uh, played hardball with a lot of those tax issues. Maybe they just won't carry milk until it gets sorted out, or you just be like, yeah, you can't get uh, you know milk in Tennessee because it's too complicated for us to deal with that, you know. Um, so it, it, they're, they're trying to make the rules in this game and it's, it's going to be kind of interesting to see where that lies for the rest of us. Um, I think, it, I think as they get more into it and they figure these things out, they computerize more of this stuff. Uh, I, I think the taxes are just going to work out and you're just going to expect that you're going to get paid taxes no matter what. Everybody's going to figure it out. Everybody's bleeding money. Everybody's trying to squeeze the lemon, right? Well, so, I, I don't mind paying taxes for goods I buy online. I, yeah. I, I'm going to pay tax for it one way or another, and that's not like I'm against paying sales tax at all. Yeah. I mean, if I can't afford it, I shouldn't be buying it, and sales tax isn't going to make a lot of difference. Yeah. So I, I, it's, it's, I just find Amazon an interesting case from a business standpoint because they're also looking into buying their own fleet of uh, airplanes, I believe. What? <laughs> and I don't know if they've done it yet. But like for shipping, for cargo oh. delivery, wow. from all of their hubs, be- because they're trying to, to completely monopolize the entire process. So like they rely right now on FedEx and UPS yeah. for some of their delivery. So they're actually looking from the plane standpoint and then into their own delivery service standpoint. Like they're actually considering becoming like a UPS or a FedEx delivery system. And so then, you will actually order from Amazon, and Amazon carrier will bring it to your front door. That so now there's the Amazon man's going to be at my door, not just the Ups man, just not not just the FedEx dude. Today I don't know why the two packages I just ordered that I've ordered several times the same stuff came by mail. 
And I'm like, well, you guys were always sent UPS before. What's going on here, right? Uh, so it seems like they go with whoever randomly, whoever is the cheapest or, or, or whatever it is. So Well, whoever they have a good standing with, too. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they don't necessarily – I mean, it's all a business, right? So they're going to do whatever the best for them. And if they can save on shipping, especially for that free shipping for mm-hmm. expedited. So mm-hmm. if everybody becomes – a prime member and they're eating the shipping cost with free shipping, it would be in their best interest to become their own shipping provider. I ordered a lawnmower and I loved it. So I didn't care oh. how big it was going to be. How was that? <laughs> in downtown Baltimore, I come home to the neighborhood kids pushing my lawnmower up and down the center of the street. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I'm glad it's a little more tame here. Uh, <laughs> all right, one more, one more. This one's for Bobby. Is Bobby back? Tweet him and tell him it's safe to come back. No. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, so this is an interesting issue. So Vine's finally on Android. Uh, so, so Chachi, you can finally make those fantastic six-second vi- videos. Did yeah, you, I don't want to. Did you see my stop-motion Furby from last night? No. You should you should check that out. It's I, I don't... I, I'm not installing Vine. No? Vine is a non-essential app at this point in time. Okay. And I'm stuck with only installing essential apps. Why? Uh, is because this a personal L- rule? L- LG is a bunch of... Oh, really? Anuses. Yeah? Um, they, they shut the hardware software st- down so tight that I can't save apps to my SD card, oh. which means I'm based purely app wise on the phone memory, which is how much, uh, I don't even remember at this, uh, like four gig. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, somebody needs to root their phone. Yeah. So yeah, I, until, until I do that, um, yeah, I, I only install essential apps at this point in Man, time. You're not helping the Android argument. I know. <laughs> this is it, well, it's not. It, it, the problem is it, it's based on company. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I don't, I don't have a problem with Android. I have a problem that companies that put it on their phones. We have never <laughs> once seen pure Android. Oh, actually, I have because I've seen Frank's uh, phone. That's not even pure. I thought he rooted it. He might have, but that's still not pure. No? Someone else configured that. Oh. We have never to this day seen Android the way Google had intended it, well, even, on, ne- even on their own devices. Maybe even on a Nexus? Yeah. That's not right. That is right. That is not right. It is. So so everybody's operating on a broken operating system. Uh-huh. Well, you know who's uh, even more broken hearted over this is Bobby. He is, he's, he's upset because he can't get Vine. Because for, he does have Jelly Bean? For whatever. Well, he has, um, and I tweeted it, um... It's Android uh, 2.3.2, I think you said. Oh, we just missed it. D- and it's a newer phone, he says. That doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't mean anything. That is so sad. You're like, so you're selling phones. Yeah. Brand new. They're like two play and wrestle fans. Same thing. And he has like a My Touch. They're both on T Mobile. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. So, um, no Vine Love. Are you on the Are you digging the vine? Have you been looking at vines there, uh, Jack? You know, I don't really use Vine. I mean, I barely use Twitter. Okay. So, I, I and that being said, I don't not because and actually, my I've talked with Justin Kamaki about this a lot. Like Twitter requires so much more energy to me, and now if you're you're making everything you make is six seconds. What are you going to tell me in six seconds that I care about? You'd be surprised, man. I, I, but it's a six-second video. Yeah. I mean, you're sword. You you know. I mean, we used. You're used to fighting for thirty seconds for promo space. You know. Mm-hmm. Six seconds. Can you even have a complete sentence with a subject or verb? I was trying Is to this cut gonna down. Going to be the death nail of entire grammar and society and communication as we know it. Or does it make us better at communication with those restrictions? You know what I could do? What could you do? I, I actually have a reason to install Vine. Okay. The Chachi 20. The Chachi 20? Oh, that'd be perfect! I could use... I the, could the, use roll, the dice roll! Yes. That is perfect! I could do that in six seconds. Yes? yes. There was some great stuff they were showing on, on, on a, a Mac break that was... Uh, I think it's Lowe's, they said. They do to-do videos with stop motion of, like, home repair stuff. And you're like, how are they going to do that? It, it works. It really works. Um, in six seconds? In six seconds. 
how how are you going to help tell me how to fish, fix my washing machine in six seconds? Hold on, um, let me uh, see if I can bring it up. It, it, I don't think it's anything like fix a wa washing machine. I mean, it's definitely yeah. like what they tell you. What they can put on here is dependent on the platform. Um, so it's like how to put a nail into a wall. <laughs> if, if if that's the case, get a dad. <laughs> <laughs> No, there was something like putting rub. If you you strip the screw, put a rubber band in there, and then and then use it, and uh, you know stuff like that, like little tips like that. I'm, I'm seeing if they'll load here. Uh, so change the battery on your power drill. Yeah, you know. Um, We're removing the need for any social interaction with other human beings at all. No, is this any different though than like Howcast and all the to-do videos that you see on YouTube? I think it's just the more inventive way. I, I, something like this with this restrictions makes you be more creative to use it. Um, oh, who was the guy, the one comedian actor that was doing his Robert De Niro impressions on there, and and he was doing these Arnold Schwarzenegger driving POV things uh, that were pretty good. Was it Will Sasso? And it was Will Sasso. Yeah, he is amazing on Vine. You can find them on YouTube. There's compilations of these on YouTube. But uh, I mean, that's that's perfect. To uh, counter what Jack said, I, I use Twitter as my uh, uh, my pre personal space uh, filter. Okay. Uh, if I if I enjoy you on Twitter, then I'll think about maybe meeting you in person. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a friend dating uh, service. Ask has, has anybody invented Twitter speed dating yet? I don't probably. I haven't seen it, but I, no. Seriously, ask, <laughs> ask. Look to your, to your, your right or your left, and ask lyric tragedy. I, I met her on Twitter first. I think I did too. Did Chachi meet you on Twitter first? Yeah, actually, he did. Okay, yes, one hundred percent. It's my filter, dude. Just about like all the people that actually, we we talked for a long time before I ever met him at at podcast. Yeah, so apparently you guys talked to her for a long time before you ever met at podcast. Yeah, right? we can, yeah, we can hear. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's it, like one hundred percent. I think everybody that we play softball with, we met on Twitter first. One hundred percent, my filter. Yeah. If I if you don't annoy the piss out of me on one hundred and forty characters or less <laughs> on a regular basis, then I, I will consider making an effort to go out and meet you in person. Okay. All right. And Chachi doesn't leave the house for. That. Crap. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of leaving the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, fine. So so Twitter is, is a way you filter down. But how do you not end up, as Lyric Tragedy could probably say, meeting somebody and then ending up a skin suit? <laughs> that's what, block, uh, that's you, what Blogfest was for. You that's meet... <laughs> that's why Bright Kite went out of business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it, the secret is uh, arranging big group meetings. Tweet ups. Yeah, it, it it, it's, tweet -ups. It's, it's the perfect it's the perfect use for tweet ups or other uh, get togethers planned by uh, groups of people. I only I only remember hearing of one stalkerish incident over the years we've been doing <laughs> yeah, this. Involving her. If the, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well that's and that's why I'm getting married. Yep, there you go. Lock that up. Yep. All right, on that note, guys. <laughs> Don't talk is... about things like that that I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me call in. <laughs> Tell her she's going to come back for the ladies' episode in a couple of weeks there, Jack, uh, when we get we'll off air here. back for the ladies' episode in a couple of weeks. Long as I'm not being eaten by man-eating lions in Tanzania, no problem. Yeah, what? she'll be fine with that. She'll come back. <laughs> that, that, also, that gives you the much-needed diversity that you will be required for your porn parody. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. very true. <laughs> we hope that's the one they watch when they write the script. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been the awesome guest. Thank you, Jack. He's uh, Tell people where they can get at you uh, for things you do online. Well, uh, you can check me out at, uh, at Jackson Lewis on Twitter, and maybe I'll use it like Chachi and decide whether or not you are worthy. <laughs> and you can also find me at uh, blogspot.bungajumping.com. Uh, I thought it was bungeejumping.blogspot.com. It probably works Whatever. out that way. <laughs> One of those ways. Just, just go yeah, away. either way. Just, it's, it's 8 o'clock on a Tuesday. I'm lucky I'm still awake. Yeah, there you go. There it is. I'm a Superman yeah. fanboy. And there's also a great one from, uh, I think, a couple weeks ago where uh, him and uh, Mr. Kanaki were trying to solve the problems of the world. Yeah, and it involves Mars. 
Yes! Oh, that was great! I love that. But I haven't eaten up anything about Mars lately. Did you know there's a moon around the asteroid? What's that? There's a moon around the asteroid that's going by. Maybe it already went by. But, uh... I didn't, I didn't hear that. Yeah, we were talking about that last week. Uh, that, oh. I, I try to feed it in the space stories. I, I love that stuff. Are they actually see classifying much, it as a moon? See how the shows before I go on? What's that? See how much I researched the shows before I go on? <laughs> exactly. I had no idea. <laughs> well, we hope you're a new fan then. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Jack, from Baltimore. Joining us, go check him out. Chashi, he is at... Uh, oh, tr- I thought you were going to do it again for me. I'm uh, at Chachi says, uh, come tweet me. I will judge you in 140 <laughs> characters or less on a daily basis. Um, Use them wisely. I wish I were joking. <laughs> uh, honestly, I- I've been a real dick lately on Twitter. Um, if... <laughs> And I know the internet's the place to judge people, but if I see it, if I wake up and I see it in my time stream, you know, in, in my feed, like first thing in the morning or as I'm drinking my first cup of coffee, chances are I'm going to unfollow you. If you're like my first three tweets that I read and you're annoying, you're gone. Yeah, no, it, 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 that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, if you're filling my time, if you're filling my stream first thing in the morning and I don't like you, pfft, Get the fuck out. <laughs> and I'm at Sorgatron.com. Help me build a better Loot Crate unboxing video over there. I got a new bloggy blog up, a new video thing. I'll be watching the Game of Thrones and not, hopefully not still rage quitting quitting, uh, quitting after that. Uh, at Sorgatron, I am not as judgeful as Chachi. I accept everybody uh, for the most part. Um, and uh, especially all you game of thrones fans uh and with that hey thanks to our awesome kind of quiet chat room because bobby left because of the game of thrones talk sorry about that bobby um but we supported your vines vine situation uh so check us out again awesomecast.com contact at awesomecast.com send us your comments at awesomecast on twitter um and uh go check us out on google plus facebook comment like Tell your friends about us. Spread us around. Uh, say, hey, did you hear what Chachi said about how he uses Twitter as his own personal dating filter or something? What? Um, that's what happens when you play telephone. People are going to blow it out of proportion later on. Uh, so God, go check. I hope Chris doesn't listen to this. <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> I'm completely joking. Um, although accurate. Right? Yeah, Didn't you of, meet your girlfriend on yeah, Twitter? Yeah. They, exactly. You know. Um, so Not there you currently. go. Not? I don't use Twitter for dating purposes currently. No, no, now it's for completely platonic uh, relationships. And before we get in any more trouble, <laughs> this is the Awesome Cast. Awesome Cast, Tom. Uh, uh, awesomecast.com. <laughs> Who's Tom? Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>